Welcome to Edmund First Online. We are excited that you guys have joined us for our service today. I wish that you guys could be here and we wish that we could see your faces today, but more than anything, we want you to stay safe. So we're going to continue with our online services. If you missed the message from Pastor Mark earlier in the week, we're going to continue with having services this way until Pentecost Sunday on May 31st. That's our tentative date of when we're hoping to be able to join back together again. So be watching for more announcements about that. This morning, we're excited for the service, excited to worship together, even if it looks a little bit different. So thanks for joining us. If you'll join me in a moment of prayer before we enter into the rest of our service this morning. God, we're thankful for the time together, even though it looks different. We're thankful to still be joined together as a family. God, give us peace this week, the peace that only you can give that calms our fears and stops our worries. God, you have come before. You are bigger. You are bigger than our worries and our fears and our uncertainty. Remind us of that this week. Help us to be content with where we're at, to be thankful for the time that we have with our families and our loved ones. Help us to see the good in everything. We love you. It's in your good name that we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. We're excited for the service this morning.
Just a hustling, clamoring world Sometimes it's hard to hear The voice of God speaking to my soul But in my quiet time alone As I approached His holy throne His tender words fall gently on my ear He still speaks I know his voice, sweeter sounds never heard by mortal ear, and to think that God, by his own choice, He still speaks I know His voice There are so many who still doubt That God can speak today They laugh and mock when we say we've heard from God the still small voice of God is heard above the doubters of this world. His timeless word rings out with hope today, and He still speaks. I know His voice, sweeter sounds. He still speaks I know His voice He still speaks I know His voice Sweeter sounds by mortal ears and to think that God by his own choice would speak to me it makes me rejoice he still speaks he Today's message is for everyone who hates to wait. <laughs> this, this is the sermon you've been waiting for. Uh, have, have you noticed that, that life is about waiting? We wait for uh, the light to turn green. And when the light turns green and you don't move forward quickly enough, the guy behind you turns red. <laughs> we, we wait in line at the grocery store, six feet apart, of course. Uh, we wait at that drive through uh, you know, the Christian chicken place. Uh, we wait in the drive through to get our food. And we are waiting for this pandemic to pass. Waiting. Waiting requires patience. 
Our, our word patience comes from the Greek word makrothumos. Macro meaning long and thumos, thermometer, that sounds familiar. Thumos meaning heat. And you put them together and, and, and it comes out long heat. It literally means it takes a long time to get hot. In other words, patient people have a long fuse. Someone said that patience is the ability to let your light shine after your fuse is blown. <laughs> Proverbs 16.32 tells us, it is better to be patient than powerful. I, uh, I believe uh, we've had a, a pandemic uh, for a long, long time. It's a pandemic of impatience. In our life, patience is often tested by, by one of three things. It's uh, tested by interruptions, it's tested by irritations, and it's tested by inactivity. Uh, first of all, let me talk to you about the test of interruptions. Interruptions are those, oh, uh, for an example, those interruptions are those solicitation calls that you get. <laughs> well, uh, with my hand up, as I was writing this sermon for this week, I got one of those calls, and uh, the guy says, I'm calling about the hail damage you have on your roof. And I said, sir, I don't have any hail damage. He said, how do you know? I said, <laughs> I said, sir, I, I live here, but did you climb up on your roof? And he's starting to irritate me. And, and he said, but there was a, there was a hailstorm that came through your, your area uh, yesterday. And I said, yeah, but friend, we did not get any hail. The storm passed us by. And then I started to get an impatient. I said, look, buddy, I'm trying to write a sermon on patience and you're, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> I sure wanted to. Interruptions will test your patience. And then there's, then there's the test of the irritations of life. Uh, and I've compiled a, oh, a, a brief list of life's irritation. Oklahoma wind. <laughs> Oklahoma hail storms. We've covered that one. Oklahoma tornadoes. Flat tires. Uh, that's, that's an irritation. Uh, bad hair. Uh, anybody got bad hair? <laughs> Uh, hey, I, I cut my own hair. How's it look? Huh? Pretty good. <laughs> a quick story if you got time. Uh, I cut my hair, and uh, then, I, then, I, then I went off, and uh, Mary, Mary uh, calls me. She's on the back porch. She's having her coffee with her dog, Berkeley, and she says, Mark, is it, I think Berkeley must have killed a rabbit. I said, no, I, I cut my hair. <laughs> uh, bad hair. Uh, that's an irritation. No hair. That, that could be an irritation for some people. Splinters. Dead batteries. That's an irritation. Misplaced keys. Is it, doesn't that just chap you? <laughs> the irritations of life. Do you, know, do you know what oysters do with irritations? They take that irritating grain of sand and they make a pearl. And then there's the test of inactivity. Oh, don't we know about this one <laughs> as we shelter in place? Waiting, waiting, nothing to do. You just wait. You're waiting for that repair technician to show up between the promised time of one and five. Waiting, waiting for your spouse to get ready. Waiting for this pandemic to pass. Did I already talk about that? <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you rather do Anything besides waiting by nature, we are not patient people. It's only, the Bible tells us, it's only when the Holy Spirit controls our lives that he produces the fruit of patience in our lives. You remember that verse in the Bible? For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Romans uh, Romans 12, 2 says, says that we're to be, watch this, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. That's your homework assignment this week. <laughs> be joyful in hope, patient 
in affliction. That's, that's where we are right now. So, so what does it take to be patient in affliction? Uh, in, in these days of waiting for our lives to get back to some sort of normalcy, I want to suggest a few things to us. First of all, let's get a new perspective. Let's, let's look at this pandemic in a, in a different light. Uh, it, 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 impatient people uh, are often people who are selfish. They see things only from their perspective. And I know I do that. When I get impatient, uh, I, I, I'm just seeing things the way that, that I see them, and, and that's the way it is. In, impatient people have tunnel vision. Uh, they, they get nearsighted. Uh, uh, look, look at this verse in Philippians. Philippians 2 tells us, Don't do anything from selfish ambition. Be humble toward one another, always considering others better than yourselves, and, and look out. That's that new perspective I'm talking about. Look out for one another's interests, not just for your own. So, so I would suggest husbands... Uh, if you'd like to be a better husband, then, then start looking at things from your, your wife's perspective. And all the wives said, <laughs> preach it, Reverend. <laughs> if, you want to be a, if you want to be a patient parent, then start looking at things from your child's point of view. And all the children said, come on, preacher. <laughs> if you want to be successful in business, then, then learn to see things the way your customer sees them. I, I like what uh, I've, I've been uh, watching Facebook quite a bit. It's kind of the way I'm doing pastoral care these days and, and I, uh, I'm intrigued by, by I'm disappointed uh, in some of the things I see on Facebook but, but there's a lot of good stuff and, I, and Tina Keller shared this on her Facebook page that, this past week and I thought it was just timely and, it, and it, it's, and it's in regard to this thing of perspective, looking at things in, in a different light. It, it, she shares, as governors and leaders are trying to figure out how to ease back into a new normal, please remember, some people don't agree with the state opening. That's okay. Be kind. Some people are still planning to stay home. That's okay. Be kind. Some are still scared of getting the virus and a second wave happening. That's okay. Be kind. Some are sighing with relief to go back to work, knowing that they may not lose their business or their homes. That's, that's okay. Be kind. Some are thankful they can finally have a surgery they've put off. That's okay. Be kind. Some will be able to attend interviews after weeks without a job. That's okay. Be kind. Some will wear masks for weeks. That's okay. Be kind. It actually improves my looks, to tell you the truth. Some, some people will rush out to get their the hair and their nails done. That's okay. Be kind. Or I'll cut your hair. <laughs> we each have a different story. If you need to stay home, stay home but be kind. If you need to go out, just respect others when in public and be kind. Don't judge fellow humans because you're not in their story. We all are in a different mental state uh, than we were months ago, so remember, be kind. <laughs> Good advice. Second thing I would say to us as we attempt to be patient in this pandemic, <laughs> develop a sense of humor. I, I've, I've said this before, but uh, patience requires developing a sense of humor. It, for me, laughter has always been life, life's shock absorber. If, if, I can fi if I can find a way to laugh at it, then I can, I can live with it. And some of you have had fun with the silly pictures that I've been posting on my Facebook page each Sunday, and, and that's simply my attempt attempt to try to find something funny during this frustrating pandemic. Uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, it ain't easy preaching to, a, to an empty sanctuary. And, and by the way, you're going to love today's post. Uh, I've re replaced my, my faithful custodian and administrative assistant, uh, Larry and Jeannie. God bless them. They've been great sports. Uh, and, and they're Facebook celebrities now, but you're, 
they haven't been as supportive as, as I had hoped. So I've, I've kind of brought in some ringers, and you're going to love today's post. But, but scient <laughs> scientific studies have proven that people who laugh often live longer. In fact, God's, God's word said it before the scientists did in, in Proverbs 17, 22, 17, 22. A happy heart is like good medicine. And, and that's not the wisdom of Dr. Fauci. That's the wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Did you know that even, that even God enjoys a good laugh? Sure he does. It, the, the psalmist said, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. It's Psalm 2-4. If you don't believe me, you can look it up for yourself. The one enthroned in, in heaven laughs. Who do, who do you suppose that God's laughing at? <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves and get back with me. Well, maybe, just maybe, laughing helps God be patient with his children. <laughs> That's what I think. I think, I think laughing is even therapeutic for God. Third, developing patience requires expanding our capacity for love. Uh, in that familiar love chapter of the Bible, you, you know it, 1 Corinthians 13, it, it says simply that love is patient. The, the, the very essence of love is patience, and the more loving we are, the more patient we'll be. And the opposite would be true, wouldn't it? That when we're impatient, we're most often unloving. Ephesians 4, 2, always, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of what? Because of your love. Fourth, I would say to us as we, we are waiting for life to resume some sort of normalcy, rest. Just rest in the Lord. Uh, have, you, have you been restless during, during all of this? <laughs> Me too. And that, that, that's what happens. When we get impatient, we, we get restless. And, and patience, think about it. Patience is really, when we're patient, it, it, it's, it's showing that we're people of faith. It means we're trusting God. Even though we can't see his hand at work, you wait. You wait with patient confidence because you know that somehow, some way, God is going to come through. Psalm 37 may be, oh, there's so many great psalms, but Psalm 37 may be one of my favorites. And Psalm 37, 37 simply says, rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him to act. I, I, I've said all along, perhaps, um, perhaps this pandemic is a way for our world to get some rest, just to take a Sabbath. Wait patiently for the Lord. Uh, my, my brother Stan wrote a book, God's Never Late. <laughs> he's seldom early, but he's always right on time. Let me say, let me say one more thing, and we'll close. Uh, give, give patience a chance to grow. We, we, we get impatient being patient. <laughs> Give it a chance to grow. Too often when we're going through tough times, we, we just want to want to bail out and, uh, you know, we just, we just want to do something. It, the inactivity just overwhelms us. And, and maybe you've said something like, well, I, I'm going to say something. I, I'm going to, I'm going to do something even if it's wrong. <laughs> and we, when we bail out and we miss out on a blessing of God, I, I want to say, to every one of us, let's, let's give patience a chance to grow in our hearts during this time. Uh, James, James chapter 1. Oh, I love James. <laughs> James says, Dear ones, is your life full of difficulties and temptations? Then be happy. <laughs> For when the way is rough, your patience, look at that, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow. And don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything. Strong in character, 
full and complete. That's, that's what I believe is going to happen to us. I think, I think you're going to be stronger. I think I'm going to be stronger. I think, I think the church is going to be stronger. I think the world is going to be better at the end of this. Don't, and don't think, don't think that you're above being impatient. You know, impatience has caused some of the godliest men and women in scriptures uh, to, to get restless and, and ultimately disobey God. They knew what God said, but they went on and did what they wanted to do anyhow because they couldn't see the hand of God working fast enough. And so they acted on themselves. You remember the story of Abraham, don't you? Abraham got, in, got impatient with, with God when God promised him a son and it was, looked like it was never going to happen. And so what did he do? He had an illegitimate son with his Egyptian maid. And, and to this day, <laughs> the world is paying the price of Abraham's impatience. Moses got impatient with God and uh, he, he got impatient with his people. <laughs> That's understandable as they were wandering in the wilderness. These people were, were complaining and whining and Moses got fed up with it. And God told Moses to speak to the rock to get the water. But instead, what did Moses do? He struck the rock. And as a result of his impatience, Moses doesn't, doesn't get to enter into the promised land. Don't, don't get out ahead of God. Don't, don't do something irrational or unfaithful or, or disobedient. Here's, here's, here's another verse from that favorite psalm, Psalm 37, verse 7. I like this. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Let me ask you, do you receive God's word today? Amen. Would you bow your hearts with me? If I've been preaching to you today, I know I've been preaching to myself. <laughs> but the, if, if uh, this message on patience has resonated with your spirit, why don't you just take bow your head and acknowledge to yourself and to God, I am not a patient person. <laughs> just confess that. And, and let me get even a little more personal. Besides this pandemic to pass, what else are you waiting for? What is it that you need God to do for you? Maybe you've been waiting for a healing for your body. Perhaps you've been waiting for a restoration of a relationship or your marriage. Maybe you've been waiting for a prodigal son or a daughter to return home. Don't, don't give up. Maybe you're waiting for some kind of reversal in your financial situation. The next question I would ask you is, how's your expector? <laughs> what are you expecting God to do? do? Do you really think God's going to come through? Jesus said, according to your faith, it will be done. I want to remind you, church, God is in control. He has a plan. He is at work. There is nothing beyond his reach or his power. And I know this. He rewards patience. Let's just rest in him. Let's pray. Lord, teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Help us all to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Help us to remember that your timing is always perfect and that while we are waiting, you're working. You're working behind the scenes. You're doing things we cannot see. Holy Spirit, fall fresh on me. Fall fresh on my people today. And fill our hearts with the fruit of love, joy, peace, and patience. Oh God, would you forgive me? Would you forgive my people for, for complaining and grumbling like the children of Israel so often did in the wilderness? And help us, give us the strength to replace our frustrations with faith. Help us to quit trying to figure out the why and, and, and let you work out the how. I pray this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit of God. And the people of God said, Amen. God bless you. I love you. Amen.